Recently, we've been getting lots of teasers for the new update for Space Engineers. From new AI mechanics to potential showcases of new blocks, we have got a lot to go through today. So make sure you stick around to the end of the video to see everything that's been revealed for this new update. On the 9th anniversary stream for Space Engineers, they showed off a live demo of the new grid AI blocks. The demo was quite short and we didn't really see any functions that we hadn't seen before as they set the AI to follow the player and they also set it to go to a waypoint. Now one thing to bring up about the AI is that the pathfinding seems much better than it currently is in the game. If you've ever tried to create a ship that automatically flies to a path before in Space Engineers, you'll know that the obstacle avoidance isn't great and by that I mean it doesn't work at all. And this was leagues better than anything we've had before. This drone was flying around the edge of an asteroid, carefully moving away from it, and it just works. I don't really know what else to say. During the showcase, they showed the terminals for two of the new blocks. Now, in a previous teaser, these two blocks had a different name. The Movement Controller Flight has been renamed to the AI Move hyphen Flight, and the Objective Controller Basic has now been renamed the AI Task Basic. Now, the AI Task Basic seems pretty similar from the last time it was showed. As I said previously during this demo, they showed the functions of the AI Task Basic to follow the player and to follow home. Now, from previous teasers, we know that follow home can also be used to follow grids as well. So you could have these drones follow your carrier around and stuff. Now, one option we didn't see shown off in this demo was the autopilot function. And as I said in my previous video about one of the teasers for grid AI, I imagine that the autopilot is flying between two points. However, I believe in that video it's called patrol rather than autopilot. So maybe this is something different. The AI move hyphen flight has some very interesting options that we haven't been shown before. The first one being that you can set the speed limit of the drone on this block. So we can see in this demo that it sets 10 meters per second. And that's why the drone flies around quite slowly in this video. It looks like you can set this anywhere between zero and 100. I imagine there can be lots of uses for this, as depending on the purpose of the drone, you might not want it flying around at 100 meters a second all the time. For example, if it's a combat drone, you might want it to fly at those faster speeds. But if it's some sort of automated mining drone, you might not want it to fly around really fast, as you don't want it to crash and lose all your heavy cargo. One of the more interesting options, in my opinion, which is more relevant to another teaser I will show later in the video, is a line to P gravity. Now, this is a checkbox option, so you can turn it on and off, but I'd imagine this means it would align to the physical gravity of planets, as in the interface, P gravity indicates the gravity of planets, and A gravity indicates artificial gravity. But if you're on a planet and you wanted to make sure your drones were always the right way up, you click the tick box to align to P gravity, and that would make it the right way up. And if you're in space, there's no physical gravity anyway, so this option wouldn't work. However, there was another teaser shown later, which I think this will be more relevant to. The last option is altitude, which, as you can imagine, just indicates how far the drone will be off the ground. Not much more to add here, just another example of how grid AI is designed to work in both space and on planets. Now, another one of these AI task blocks was shown up in a later teaser. However, we're going to be doing these in chronological order, and there's a couple of other teasers that came out before that. So, at the end of another Keen livestream, we were shown this image. Now, I hope one thing that immediately stuck out to you is that on the front of this ship, there is clearly a new cockpit, some sort of bike cockpit, shall we say. So we've been told by staff at Keen that there's at least two new blocks on the ship. So if the bike cockpit is one of them, what are the others? So the block in the middle of this ship is the event controller. Now, whilst the name of this block was confirmed after this teaser was shown, we have actually seen this before. In a previous video, we covered a teaser for this block that was posted on Keen's social media. And we saw that this block could detect lots of different conditions and then activate other blocks based on those conditions. So the question is, what is this doing on this ship? So there's one or two things, or potentially both, that it could be doing. Number one, as I mentioned previously when we covered the AI task flight, is that it had an option to align you to P gravity. So potentially, the event controller is aligning this ship to gravity so that it doesn't roll over while you're flying it. And number two, again, it had the option to set your altitude. And perhaps the event controller can also detect your altitude. And then it can override your thrusters automatically to make sure that you're at that altitude. So you always stay off the ground. As this is some sort of hover bike ship, that would be obviously very useful. But as always, we'll have to wait and see. Now, they said at least two blocks, so there could be more blocks in this teaser that we haven't seen. So the two blocks next to the event controller are the pillar block and a small cargo container. There's obviously hydrogen thrusters on the bottom and at the back. There's a battery and a hydrogen tank I can see, and obviously a gyroscope. Now, there are two blocks on the side with a vent on, and I'm not necessarily sure what they are. There is a vent block in the game currently. I don't know if this is the same one, so I don't want to say yes or no that there is a new block. However, it could potentially be one of these armor panels, as I'm not going to claim I know what every single armor panel looks like, so potentially one of these is a new angle we don't currently have. But they said at least two, so potentially there is only the two new blocks that we can see, and another one is hidden within the ship. So the next teaser we got was the event controller. This is how we learned its name, and more importantly, we saw quite a few of its functions. So on the left hand side of this image, you can see the large grid and small grid event controller. The small grid one being the one that's on top of that hover bike from the previous teaser. And the large grid one is the one we saw in the original teaser for this block. On the right hand side, we can see a series of scenarios the block can detect. 
Now we can see about a quarter of the options here, plus altitude at the bottom, which I imagine is the top option if these are alphabetical. So there's many other functions that are on this list. So we've got angle change, which could be for ships or could be for hinges. We've got block added or removed, which I imagine lets you choose which blocks have been added or removed to the grid and then trigger an action based on that. Block integrity, which we saw during the original teaser, where we saw a gyroscope get ground down by a grinder. And after it reached a certain threshold, an action was triggered. Cargo filled, very useful detecting when your mining ship is full. Cockpit occupied, which will be very useful for turning on your ships when you get into the cockpit and then turning it all off when you get out. No longer do you have to have all those buttons on your hotbar, all those timer blocks that turn everything on and off. Door opened, very useful for your airlocks. Gas tank filled. Finally, finally, the hydrogen generator won't drain all of my hydrogen on the base. Landing gear locked and piston position, which I imagine are going to be very useful for people building walkers. And finally, altitude, which is one of the things I suggested that the hover bike was using in the previous teaser. Now on the right hand side, you can see that the event is altitude. The condition is less than the threshold, with the threshold being 4,523 meters. The input is zero, which I guess means it's zero meters off the ground. It looks like this has been placed on a base, so I'd imagine it is zero meters off the ground. And then finally, you've got output action slot one. So if you ever use the sensor, you know that you can set actions in up to four slots when something comes into range of the sensor. So imagine this is going to be the same, that you can set something in at slot one, and then the action will happen when these conditions are met. Now, something that's interesting about this is that both the small grid and large grid event controllers all have four lights on them. And this says output action slot one. So maybe you can have up to four events detected on each event controller. Batteries have four lights on them and the lights on them change color to indicate what state the battery's in. So if the battery is turned off, it's red. And if it's on discharge or recharge, it's yellow or blue. So I imagine these lights will indicate what state it's detected in. You notice that the large grid one, they're hiding light number one, which is the output slot we're currently using. So they're obviously hiding something from us here so that we can't see how it works. I'd be interested to see as this has four lights, if it could also detect multiple inputs to do multiple actions. For example, if cargo container full and drill is on, turn off drill. Or if video liked and channel subscribed, receive free cookie. As having the ability to detect multiple conditions and output one action if all conditions are filled would be very useful. But maybe there'll be other ways around this. I'm sure you could just toggle on event controllers on and off with other event controllers to achieve and and or statements. But it'd be very interesting to find out. Good AI is Keen Software House's sister company that researches and develops AI. They showed a video recently about their experiments into robotics, which they use space engineers to demonstrate how to make an AI walk. Whilst this is all very technically impressive, my focus was on the things on the end of the legs of the walker. And I don't know about you, these aren't anything in the game I've seen before. At first I thought they were pistons, but looking at them, they don't look like pistons at all. They seem to be some sort of suspension that when the robot pushes down into the ground, they go in a little bit just to keep the robot kind of level to some degree. Now we have been tricked in the past by mods that have made it into these kinds of videos. We all remember what happened with the Paradise Planet, right? So we won't rule out that this could be a mod. So if you do recognize this mod, let me know. But this definitely isn't a block that's currently within Space Engineers. So potentially this could make it into the update as a way to make building walkers easier. As we already know, the event controller will make it easier anyway. So maybe this is just another part of the update. And the final teaser is one I'm sure you've all been waiting to see. And that is how AI combat will work. Now, previously we had seen the combat controller offensive and the combat controller defensive. So if these names have changed like the other controllers, it's likely these would be called AI combat offensive and AI combat defensive. And this is definitely the offensive variant. From this short teaser, we can see that AI's combat has been improved with a multitude of new things. For starters, we can see that the attack pattern of this drone is set to hit and run. And what's shown in this teaser is that this hit and run tactic is where the drone flies towards the ship, attacks until it reaches its break off distance from the ship. And when it reaches that break off distance, the drone turns around and flies away. Now, later in the teaser, we see it's got a retreat angle, which is currently set to 120 degrees. So the ship turns 120 degrees and then flies away. And then we see when it gets to that 1000 meters, it then resumes its attack run. Now, considering the previous AI in the game would fly straight towards you, shooting at you, and then would either slow down when it got into range or would just keep flying into you. This is obviously a massive step up from what we had previously. One of the things to keep note of is the maximum distance is 2000 meters, which is obviously the range of the railgun. I'm already seeing it right now. People are going to make these drones that retreat to 2000 meters and then have a railgun and they will stay at 2000 meters from you, continually firing railguns at you. It is going to be the most beautiful, annoying thing in the game. It could be that there is an attack pattern specifically for this, as the only attack pattern we see in this is hit and run. And there could be one that is set to sit at a certain range and just attack the enemy. And it stays at that 2000 meters the entire time. It'd be interesting to see what kind of tactics there are. And we also know there's a defensive version of this, which will be, again, very interesting to see. So when? The answer is, it's supposed to be this year. 
We've got a lot of teasers recently, which would indicate to me that they're gearing up to release it soon. But we don't know other than the fact that we were told it was supposed to be coming out this year. Which of these teasers for the update are you most excited about? Do you think you saw anything I didn't see in these teasers? Let me know with a comment below. And as always, like and subscribe for more Space Engineers content.